Alright guys, so today we're going to look at gravimetric analysis. This is a really important technique in, in chemistry. Um, it's something that chemists beyond school, so chemists in the lab, will do a lot. So you'll do a lot in, at school, you'll do a lot at university, but as a working chemist you'll also do this one a whole lot, just to, you know, as you go along varying degrees of accuracy and precision. All right, so what is it? So we've got a little bit of vocab to go. So what's an analyte? This is the first one you need to know. Basically, an analyte is the chemical species which is being measured. And this is in any chemical analysis. The analyte is the thing that you are measuring or analyzing. Um, now, gravimetric, gravimetric analysis, that's what that's short for, is determining the percentage composition using mass, hence gravity, because we use gravity to pull the mass down on the scale so we know what it is. Uh, so what are the uses? Basically we can use it to work at the mass composition of a mixture when we've separated it using physical separations and we work at how much of a different mixture is you know, each different thing and that's what we'll look at today. Um, we can look at the mass composition of elements in a compound and that's actually the most interesting part as far as I'm concerned. It's not the example we'll go with today, we'll go with the simple example and there'll be a more detailed example um, for this one here at a, in a later video. Um, so a mass composition of elements in a compound using um, chemical and then physical separation. And you can also use it to assess the purity, which is also a really interesting thing to do with it. Assess the purity, analyze ingredients, pollution levels. And now what you're looking at here is these are the real world um, uses of this. Uh, and if, if you're a if no working chemist, this is probably something they're going to do on a regular basis. So let's have a quick little a little example here. We'll look at separating out sand and salt. What's really interesting is that separating separating out sand and salt is a multi-stage separation. Okay, so you start off filtering it out. Fil so you got salt, sand. So in a um, situation, you would have sand salt, so, oh, or NaCl, so we're looking at ocean water here, and water, okay, so basically we want to separate this, so the sand and salt mixture into its component ingredients and work out what percentage of it was sand, what percentage of it was salt. So our first job, so this is the practical method, you will weigh the sample, the filter paper, and the evaporating basin. So this filter paper here, this evaporating basin empty, this empty, and the sample. You mix the sample with excess H2O. And the reason you use excess is you want all of the salt, the NaCl, to dissolve. The sand's not going to, and it's going to be tough to know, so you just keep putting more in until you're sure that you've got enough. Um, you filter and weigh the dried residue. Um, okay, so we filter it through here, Coming through here will be sand, sorry, salt and water, and this will just be sand. We dry this in an oven, and then we weigh it. Um, and so we weigh it, and we take away the mass of the filter paper. And that will give us the mass of the sand. Then we evaporate the filtrate in here. Um, in an evaporating basin, probably in an oven, you don't want to do it boiling with a fast heat, because that will... You know, as it boils, it will spit out, and when it takes out, it will take out particles of sodium chloride. Um, so when this is done, this is fully evaporated in an oven, you weigh it, you subtract the mass, of the, like the weighed mass, so you subtract from that the mass of the evaporating basin, that's the mass of your salt. It's that simple. Um, well, that's the method, that's how to do it. So that's your multi-stage separation, and that's how we do it. Then... We have to do some calculations. It's chemistry. We like maths. We're pretty good at it. Um, so, the formula essentially is this. The percent of the analyte is the mass of the analyte divided by the mass of the sample times 100. It's a simple, what percentage of the total mass is it? Now, we want to know the mass of this and this. So that actually makes this analyte A and B. But they're both analytes. Um, and you'll see why we measure both of them in a minute. It's actually, there's a good reason for it. So, I'm going to 
get rid of those. Um, so the mass of sample is 3.45 grams. Remember, we use the metric system. Um, the mass of sand is 1.27 grams, and the mass of sodium chloride, these are the weighed numbers, so these are the experimental numbers, um, is 2.08 grams. All right, so let's have a look what we what we get. So let's work out the percentage of sand. So it is the mass of the sand divided by the mass of the sample um, times 100. So that's 1.27 divided by 3.5, 3.45 times 100. And that gives us 36.8%. Now, we also want to look at the mass of sodium chloride. Um, and you'll see, again, why we want to do this in a second. So the mass of the sodium chloride divided by the mass of the sample is 2.08 divided by, again, 3.45 times 100. This gives us 60.3%. Now you'll notice something. Well, actually, first you'll notice that we use three significant figures, and that is because we have three significant figures all the way through our calculations. So we can't go more than that. We can't go up to four because we don't have four at one point. That's our minimum, but that is our minimum. So we should stick with three significant figures. Um, it does not equal 100%. 60.3 plus 36.8 is, what's that? This has 37, so it's 97%. There's several reasons for this. One, in an experiment, we're going to have some error. That's just going to happen. So there is some error at different points. There might be other contaminants, um, things which we lost along the way. There might have even been things which added to it. Um, so there are lots of reasons that this number could be up or down. And that's us. Um, I hope that made a lot of sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.